people in front of me, not who I am. My name is Stephanie Williams. I'm the um, Executive Director for the Development Authority. Um, for the record, I also want to say my job is to, to bring in industry. I am a steward of the land, I'm a steward of the people, and I am a speaker for industry as well. So um, I'm here tonight not speaking for or against. I'm just stating the facts as we have them. Um, I do want to begin by stating what our mission is at the Development Authority. It is on our website. It is, it is approved by my board. Um, but basically it states, uh, through thoughtful collaboration and planning, we will encourage the development and expansion of business and industry within our borders and the region. We will promote and protect our natural resources within our community. We will protect and enhance Brooks County's quality of place by encouraging growth and expansion within our major historic districts and thoroughfares while maintaining the historic integrity of the spaces. We will continue to collaborate with our elected and appointed officials, board members, and the community, always conscious that we are servants of the people of Brooks County. So um, right now, we do not have a completed application for industrial revenue bonds. Um, we had started this process some time ago. It's gone through a couple of revisions, and um, so we had some, some questions. Um, for example, on our application, it's an 11-page application process, um, and it's very, very thorough. It asks questions like, um, what kind of uh, business organization that uh, who is seeking industrial revenue bonds? What kind of you know organization that? Uh, and it was typed in as an LLC. That was not an available, um, Sugina was not available for them to check that, so that was typed in. And um, when you're asking for industrial revenue bonds, you're not asking for $5 or $10, you're asking for millions of dollars. And, um, and being a representative, looking out for the taxpayer dollar, we, um, we're asking, you know, who guarantees those bonds? So um, we want every industry to succeed. That is the ultimate goal of any business. Um, but in the unfortunate event that a company, especially something like an LLC, wants a liability warrant to go under, we want to make sure that those bonds are guaranteed to be paid back. And um, so there was just basic questions like this. How many jobs we provided? And like what was stated, there's none. Um, when, and, and I think it's great that you're partnering with Brooks County Schools to, to uh, train, but as you know, there's just, you're training people to leave Brooks County. So we want to bring jobs in, and training people. That's something we keep in mind as we proceed. Um, so that we are waiting for certain documents, and I understand they are getting those together, and I will present that to the board once we have a completed application. Um, the industrial revenue bond fees, um, they are industry standard. Um, and you can see that on our website. I had, um, when I set up our application, it wasn't one that I designed by myself. It was designed through um, extensive research with EDAs across the state of Georgia that offer um, a, you know, industrial revenue bonds and how they go about that process. So this were not set fourth before, so I was kind of having to start from scratch here. Um, we also take into account the net if it negatively impacts someone's property value. So we, we look at the taxpayer's digest, um, possible uh, tax revenue. We, we want to know, even in the tax incentive plan that was set forth by the Development Authority Board and the Tax Board uh, jointly, so that, you know, when it deals with future abatements for solar generation, that certain aspects were taken into, uh, taken, um, into account. Jobs created, sales tax generation, that sort of thing. And um, so there's a lot of different things that we look at, different avenues that are taken into account. Um, one thing that was not addressed was potential fire hazards. We uh, understand uh, solar as a, an industry does have an issue as a whole, not necessarily to point out one person or another or one company or another, but solar does have issues with fire. Uh, and there are companies that you can research in yourself that have um, had issues with this. And we had two fires uh, last year and they were pretend they were fire hazards, and one did three million dollars in damage. These are electrical and chemical fires. So, 
Um, as that is addressed even in our comprehensive plan, we just we want to make sure that we are compliant with our comprehensive plan, that we don't add a, an additional potential liability or potential threats. And then we also look at our comprehensive plan because um, just like the board of commissioners and every municipality, the development board is part of creating that comprehensive plan. And we had noted well over there was some different references, whether it was uh, protecting ag land or protecting our scenic corridors or natural thoroughfares, um, land use, there's just many, many different references. And um, in a meeting that I attended two weeks ago, the Department of Community Affairs, that is something that was addressed, was that um, if, you know, for example, I'm just gonna put this out there, but if you're looking for housing, and that's something that we need desperately, not only in Brooks County, but in the region of the United States, if it's not in your comp plan and you apply for that, they're going to toss your application in the trash can. And they just flat out told us this. And there's a room full of people. Adversely, if you go against your comp plan and you have a habit of going against your comp plan, they will also throw your application for grants and designations into the trash can. They won't entertain it. So um, these are things that do need to be weighed. And the development for reason, the only one that has to weigh this, obviously, the board of commissioners also has to as well. And as a public administrator, um, there, is a, there is a phrase that is constantly ingrained into us, and it is the protection of the health, safety, and general welfare of the public. And so as that is ingrained in us, the way do no harm is to med students is something that we constantly refer back to. So um, I don't have really anything other to say other than what, when we do get the application, I will present it to the board, and then we will go from there. But these are the concerns and what we look at when we when our board has to weigh whether or not this is 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 the right thing to do. So for us, it's not just about hey, we can get in some uh, we, can, we can generate some revenue. It's is this the best for the county? Um, because I, um, this is not the only one that's coming. We have many many other solar projects coming up there's lined up behind this thousands of acres in fact, in fact that are lined up right behind this and um so you know this is just this is one of many that we'll be considering so that's all i have to add thank you uh miss williams any commissioner have any questions for miss williams i guess i'm prepared today i'm really talking I, I just have a lot of questions um miss williams you said this goes against our comp plan. How many instances of our comp plan does this go against? Line item by line item, it was well over a dozen. Uh, it was well over two dozen, actually. Um, I don't have a copy of that with me. I had emailed a copy to uh, Mr. Kim as well as our attorney as well, um, because it's something we need to be prepared for. Um, a comp plan can be. Uh, you can redo your comp plan so that you know if you want to go back and you want to take out certain mortgage or add mortgage that will make sure that you're in compliance, then that's fine. Um, but as it stands right now, there's there's several several line items which involves protection. It, for example, in more than one place, it to, uh, as uh, Ms. Davidson pointed out, where it says that solar should not be um, placed on agricultural land. So it even says housing can't either, and we need housing. So it's not like I can just go put some housing there either, because so, like I said, it's it's written there multiple times. <laughs> so have we not ever allowed a business against our comp plan? I can't enter into the past. I haven't. I've only been in my job for two and a half years, or three years now, so I can't tell you what the first comes in the past. But it's possible. Um, I believe, from what I understand, this is what I have been told, and so this is just as best of my knowledge. To my knowledge and understanding, um, the Department of Community Affairs has kind of held their, had their feet held to the fire, it's a nice way of saying it, um, when federal grants have come down and looked down to the state governments. And so what they have done is they've asked if counties, authorities, and municipalities have been following their comp plan. And uh, what you often see when you do go in every five years is elected officials change and they come in and and I've been in multiple meetings where it's been asked, hey, who's all read their comp plan? And many, many, many haven't. 
So what they'll do is when um, that what they'll do is they'll tell you they'll say, okay, you know, well, our feet's being held to the fire now, so we're holding your feet to the fire. So I don't know what was done in the past, but I can tell you that that's no longer the case, and they are telling us this. You're telling development authorities this. You're telling county commissioners. I mean, the people that sit in these meetings that I attend, there are there are elected and appointed officials across the board from all over the state of Georgia. So they're telling us now, look, if you did it before, you can't do it tomorrow. So I don't know what's been done in the past, but I'm telling you now that I have, we've been told and I've been at multiple meetings where they're telling us, do not violate that plan. When is our comp plan up for recall? Well, 2027. It has to, it's through 2020. It just started this year, 2023 to 2027. We just, um, for Commissioner Largo, to, to add on to that, we just went through the process of rewriting our comp plan. Um, and SGRC assist the county. Um, that also included officials of other municipalities as well as the county authority. Yes. So they were representatives from all tables to sit in on that plan. Yes. But, but it is, I it is a working document. It, doc it is a working document. Yes, it is a working document. It needs to be changed. <coughs> it needs to be changed. If it needs to be reviewed, if it needs to be updated. I'm going to put it out with you today with there being a solar ordinance that it needs to be reflected into the comp plan so that it, it can absolutely can be kept. So mm -hmm. if it is not law, it is a yes. And correct, Commissioner Axel, just, just to that point, yes. Um, the previous comp plan that we had, we did not complete everything in that comp plan. Right. So, and it is pretty common that a county and or municipalities mm -hmm. do not. That's why it's a visible document. Yes, and that we're, but this in, in saying that too, um, you're right, on, on both counts, it, it is a living document and it can be updated um, and it should be revisited. I would say, I would suggest anyway, this is one of the reasons why I started the quarterly meeting was to create benchmarks to stay on track with our municipalities and our county government to make sure that we meet those things. Because, for example, uh, the development authority prior had not created a rail spark. Well, I got contacted as to, uh, right after this was being adopted, as to, well, why didn't you make a rail spark? And, of course, that was before my time. So I said, well, I don't know. I would assume it's because we didn't have the funding, because that way you check the contracts. It's like $4 million. So I said, well, we, we didn't have the funding. So I assume it's because of the lack of funding. So that's what they had to put in there. But I had to answer for the fact that we did not do that. So I'm just I'm letting you know that they're holding our feet to the fire. And so they can, can, but it can be. That we didn't. Right, right. But you, you're but right. We were you still, it was a living document that we were still able to update. Yes, yes. You can absolutely update it, like I'm saying. But I was, like I said, I was being told in a room full of people that if it goes against your comp plan, we'll throw your out the trash can. So I'm, I'm just letting you know that we were told that. So that's just something that needs to be weighed. That's all. Go ahead, Ms. Sherry. She, uh, Stephanie's right on pretty much what she is saying, but every 10 years we revisit your comp plan and your work of your report of accomplishments. If for some reason you have something in there and you saw something else that you needed to take the place of that, then you can, at that point, it automatically can be re redone. You don't have to go through any process because we are charged by DCA to make sure that what you all have said, you have tried to do, or you realize it wasn't as important as what you actually thought it was. Now, when you are applying for grants, any kind of federal, state, local, whatever grants, if that is not within your comp plan, they are not looking at that grant favorably because it's not in your comp plan. Now, if you wanted to apply for any kind of federal, state, local grant, then you would need to amend your comp plan, which you can do very easily by public end. And then you add that to it, which makes everything good. I mean, all 18 counties within our region, I have never seen them complete everything that they could do. It's a wish list to begin with. Yes. And a lot of times you don't need to do it. So I'm a cop man. I'm a cop man start uh, 2023. That's right. Fiscal year okay. 2023. So in 2025, that's when RDC 
the bond to We have we are charged by TCA to give the local governments two right, years. The next two years. Yes. But everything is going to cost me a now until 25 old steady. Old steady. Yes, sir. Everything is now. Everything that we got in the cost me right now, right, stays in place until 2025. Yes. And then yes. we can go back in there and make some changes. Yes. Because you can't make changes to this cop man on a daily basis. No. Okay. You can't wake up one Monday and say, I don't want to change this. And then what happens? And then Friday you come, oh, I think I'm changed this. You can't do that. Well, let me say, in the current comp plan, the solar farms are in the, <coughs> they are mentioned in several places. And the um, promoting the safety and the development of farmland is in there over 10 times. I can tell you that. But I just wanted to clarify if y'all were. Yes, it has to be in there if you are applying for.